Hi everyone, it's Nate here. Uh, I'm in my hallway closet where my alarm system panel is and today I'm going to do a quick demonstration and show you how you can connect your existing wired alarm system to the connected alarm panel uh, in, in just a few minutes. First step you want to do is figure out how many zones you have. Um, one of the best clues for that is to find your existing keypad, the keypad from your old alarm system. Now I've already removed this from the wall but normally if you're lucky whoever installed your alarm system should have written a zone listing here and this is the first clue to determine how many zones you have and uh, how many sensors you're going to want to hook up individually to the connected system. So let me zoom in there closely so you can see. You can see my system has a front door, a garage entry door, um, a motion detector, two glass breaks, and a patio door. So that's actually a to that's five zones but a total of six sensors. So it's up to you if you want to keep the zones as is or break them apart. I always recommend that the doors each individually get connected. So for example here we're going to take the front door and the garage entry door and break those apart into two separate zones. Uh, that way they can each show up individually in smart things or in home assistant so that you can build automations based off of whether the front door opens or the garage entry door opens. Um, so the next step is, let's, let's look in the alarm panel and see if we can identify the wires for these zones. Alright, I'm going to open up my alarm panel enclosure here. Um, these metal enclosures are pretty typical. And this is an Ademco alarm panel. Another important clue is usually on the inside door of your alarm panel, there's a wiring diagram. Now on the Ademco panels, it's a li little bit hard for you to see in the video, let me zoom in a little bit. The screw terminals here don't have any labels, they just have numbers underneath. So to know what goes, goes to what, we're going to look at our wiring diagram. And this is telling me that you can see the kind of the illustrations here for zone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And those start from screw terminal number 8 through screw terminal number 16. So that's what we're going to use to identify our, our wires. Now I know this looks a little bit intimidating, but it's actually really simple once you get your head around it. Now if you, you may have noticed, I've already uh, labeled my wires here. This is really the most important first step for a successful installation, is to try to label your wires before you remove everything from the wall. And like I showed you before, we're looking at the the zone listing from our keypad uh, and corresponding with the zones, the, the numbered zones from here to kind of work backwards and figure out which wire or which group of wires goes to which sensor. Now before I touch anything, it's important to disconnect the power. This is so you don't get electrocuted or short circuit anything. In most cases you'll find an AC adapter or transformer like this uh, somewhere nearby your alarm panel. And this actually has a wire going through the wall and then coming up out uh, in the alarm panel, but this is what powers the entire alarm system. So to make sure that we're safe, I'm just going to unplug that and power that off. Now most alarm systems will also have a backup battery, these lead acid batteries. So to make sure that there's no power running through the alarm system, I'm going to take off the contacts from this battery as well. And we're not going to need this anymore, so um, you'll recycle it according to your local regulations. Okay, so now I've zoomed into the internals of my alarm panel. Before we take apart any wires, I kind of want to point out, again, we're looking at the, the wiring diagram to determine what's connected to what so that we can label everything and, and be sure we know what's going on before we take things apart. So these first two terminals on the left here are AC power. We're not going to need those. That's what's coming up through the AC adapter that's down, down below. Um, we're not going to connect the connected board to an AC power because that will damage it. Uh, your kit will come with a AC adapter that's specific for the connected panel, which is 12 volts DC. Um, so don't use this wire. The next terminal is the siren output, and then the two next to that are your black and red, that's your aux power, uh, negative and positive. And then we see two wires for the uh, keypad communication, the green and yellow. And then starting at terminal number 8 here, this is where our wired zones are. Now let's get started with zone 1, which we saw before is our garage door and front door that are grouped together. And these are on terminals 8 and 9. So to get started with this, 
this first like let's observe what we've got going on here. You see this is a what, we, what they call an end of line resistor. Uh, this resistor is very common in these traditional alarm systems and we don't need those for connected. So if you see if you see resistors in line with your zone wires we're going to either rip those out or remove them. And so let's go ahead and remove the two connections from zone one which we know is eight and nine and I believe it's this red wire here. And I'll try to pull these out so we can take a closer look. You guys see that? So our zone one, as we saw before, are, are two wires, because one's going to my front door and one's going to my garage entry door. And as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna remove the resistor and then we're also gonna separate these two. Uh, this crimp connector is connecting that front door and garage entry door onto a single zone but on connected, we want to make sure that these are individually connected so that we can individually monitor the front door and the garage entry door. So you can either cut these off and then restrip the ends of the wires, or sometimes these little crimp connectors, if you just give them a little squeeze with, the, uh, with your crimper, they'll loosen up enough that you can pull things out. All right, here's the Here's the resistor. We don't need that anymore, so I'm just gonna discard it over here. And now let's separate these two wires. There we go. I've got them apart. So now we have two separate uh, bare copper wires for our front door and our garage door. Now let's move on to zone two, which we saw before was my motion sensor. So again, zone two is terminals number nine and 10 on this panel. So I'm gonna remove those, and let's take a look at what we've got here. Again, you see this end of line resistor on the end, so I'm gonna remove that. Just give it a little squeeze with my crimp tool, and it comes right out. So this yellow and green wire are the signal for my motion sensor, but if I follow this back to the main cable here, uh, you'll see that this motion sensor wire actually has four inner wires. There's a red, black, and a green yellow. Now that's because motion sensors as well as glass break sensors and some other uh, type of powered sensors have four wires because two of those wires carry 12 volts power to actually power to the, the device where the other two have the low voltage signal loop to signal the alarm panel or the connected device if it's uh, open or closed or motion is detected or not detected. So one easy way to tell the difference between a motion sensor, a glass break sensor, versus a regular door or window sensor is that the motion sensors and powered glass break sensors are always going to have four internal wires. Now you see these, this black and red are going to my aux power output. And we're gonna just remove those two so that we can then connect them to the aux power output of the connected board. And there's a big bundle of aux power wires in here, so we'll sort that all out. Because I have a couple of glass break sensors. If you have multiple motion sensors uh, or power devices or even smoke detectors, you're going to see a big uh, kind of cluster of black and red wires in these two terminals too, which is uh, pretty typical. And they're kind of twisted together. We'll leave them like that for now. I'm just gonna separate these. So there was, there's our motion sensors. And now zone three is my glass break sensor. And then my last zone here is my patio door. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. I've already removed the resistors from this one. There we go. So now we've removed all of our wired sensors, labeled all the wires, Right, now the last thing I'm going to do is remove the remaining wires. These uh, these four black, red, green, yellow are for my keypad. We'll deal with those later. I'm just going to get them out of the way for right now. And then this red, yellow are my siren wires. Now again, before you remove stuff, it's really important to label the wires. Uh, so it's a lot harder to figure out which is which once they're removed from your existing alarm panel. Um, there we go. Now we've kind of cleaned everything up and we can install the connected panel. If you wanted to do a really beautiful clean installation, 
you could remove the the entire old alarm system. In in this case, I've got plenty of room in here, so I'm just going to leave this as is, but it just won't be functional anymore. And we can take our connected panel and kind of mount it in here and then start wiring things back up. Now I've already configured this device and connected it to Wi-Fi and I've written down my new zone listing here on a piece of paper. Um, so I've already configured the device um, offline before I mounted it, which I usually recommend just to test it and get a feel for how the configuration works and write down where things are, are wired so that then you can kind of wire things up really quickly. Now let's talk about mounting this. I know this is not the most elegant of mounting solutions, but um, for the time being, this is the, the best we've got. I've uh, got this piece of 3M double-sided mounting tape that's kind of cut almost exactly to the right size to fit the connected alarm panel board. So I'm going to put that adhesive on the back of the connected alarm panel and this should um, protect those through hole solders from having contact with the metal backing. It also provides a nice strong mounting surface. So I'm just going to kind of press that foam mounting tape into the connected panel on the back and then rip off the adhesive and just mount it nicely right here. Okay, now all we have to do is hook everything up. The first terminal is zone one, and then, and then the third terminal is zone two, and in between there's a common ground. So each uh, pair, two, two zones, share the same common ground, very similar to the way the screw terminals on the traditional panel are, are, are structured. So in my new setup that I've already set up in SmartThings, my zone one is patio door and my zone two is motion. So let's get started with those. And the patio door, as I said, the door and window sensors are simple. They're just two wires. One's going to go into zone one and the other into the common ground next to it. I'm going to tighten down zone one using my precision screwdriver. I'm going to leave this one a little bit loose though because another wire has to fit in there. So let's get the wires for my motion sensors. Now remember these have four inner wires, so the zones are, the red, black are always going to the power and then the zone is the, um, the, the remaining two, in my case it's green and yellow. And it doesn't matter which one goes to which, we'll just put the yellow one here in the common, tighten that down. And then the green wire here in the one labeled zone two. Now this, uh, this is a, one of our pre-production connected boards. The newer panels, we made a couple of tweaks, which will be slightly different, makes it easier to see those um, zone numbers because I've shifted up these screw terminals and put the zone markings underneath them. I don't have one of the uh, production versions in hand yet. They're still being manufactured, but that should make it a lot easier to see where you're, where you're screwing things into. Okay, so now for this motion sensor, like I said, Motion sensors have power as well, and we've already kind of had these red black wires twisted together from the initial, uh, from the original alarm panel. So I'm going to keep them twisted together just for convenience, and we're going to use now the connected alarm panel to power these devices. You can see here I've got this first terminal is aux plus, and then the middle terminal is the aux minus, and this right term, rightmost terminal is the switched power for the siren. So we're going to take our red and black, the always on aux power, and connect it to the aux plus and minus. Which one goes right here, the red goes in aux plus. And black goes in aux minus. I feel like I'm missing a wire there. Here it is. One fell out. Let me just put that guy back in there. Okay, there we go. We've got our powered devices here. And I'm going to go, go ahead and finish, uh, finish wiring the, the remainder of the zones. So my zone three front door. And we put it in zone three. And common ground next to it. And the ground for zone three is shared with zone four. So 
Zone 4, in this case, is I don't have anything connected to Zone 4, so that's okay. So I'll just tighten that down. Uh, zone 5 is my garage entry door, so here, that one is right here. And again, it doesn't matter for these door and window sensors which one goes to which. So green is, and then zone 5 and 6 share common ground, this middle one. And for me, zone 6 are my glass break sensors. And my glass break sensors are right here. Now I have two glass break sensors. Let's see if you guys can see this. And here they are. And again, I've tied these together into a zone so that I've just crimped one of those wires together. So I'm going to take the two terminal ones and put one in the common ground here with zone 5. There we are. All of our zones are now wired up. And the last step is the siren. So here's the wire for the siren. Um, now the, the siren works by when 12 volts of DC power is applied to the siren, then it will sound. That's how most alarm system sirens work. So what we do is we take the, the red, the hot wire for the siren, and we put that in. There we go. And then the, in this case, it's a green wire for the siren. This would be the, the negative or the ground. That's just going to go into this middle common ground with the rest of the aux uh, power, the 12 volt power outputs ground. So a lot of stuff stuck into that one middle terminal there. And that's everything. Now we've all we've wired up our five zones and we should be good to go. Now we just uh, now let's just insert the Wi-Fi module. Everything's wired here. I haven't plugged in the power yet, but we'll insert the Wi-Fi module. These just go into the pins. Now the important thing to make sure is that the uh, antenna here, this copper antenna is pointing to the right and the USB port is pointing to the left, the same um, orientation as the power port on the base. So I'll just press that in firmly. That's all there is to it. And now for power. Uh, your kit comes with a DC power adapter and optionally you can get the backup battery. So remember we're not going to use the AC power transformer that was originally powering the alarm panel because connected won't work with AC power. It will damage the board. So let's plug in our DC power adapter down below. I've run the cable up through the hole in my uh, alarm panel and I'm, since I'm using a backup battery, I'll just plug in to the input on the backup battery. And then take this extension wire from the backup battery from the output to the connected board. We should see it blink as it powers on. There we go. Turn on the battery backup. And we're all set. You saw the connected board was blinking as it booted up. It makes a short blink every time that uh, sensor is uh, opened or closed and so on a, on the first boot up it's going to blink and communicate the initial status of every sensor to your home automation platform as soon as it boots and now um, I'll go around the house check using my phone and uh, opening and closing the doors and walking past the motion sensor to make sure that everything's working properly but uh, that's all there is to it to wire my alarm system using connected